Hey, everybody. How you doing, Jack? How you doing, Jonathan? Good, thank you. How are you doing, Andrew? Good, very good. It's a little warm here in uh, L.A., but as far as I can tell, it's also very warm in the U.K., right? We hit the hottest day on record for the U.K., wow. over 40 degrees. Wow. Just the hottest place on Earth, apparently. So 40 day. degrees Celsius is probably like almost 90 or 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah. Crazy. We've been blessed with a little bit of rain today, which is good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 All right. So welcome, everybody. Let us know where you're watching from. Don't be shy. Everyone gets shy. <laughs> well, I can say where I'm uh, talking from. I'm talking from Tunbridge Wells, which is just south of London in the cool. UK. Excellent. And Jack, you're where? I'm going live from Northampton, UK. All right. East Midlands. Nice. What about you, Andrew? So I'm in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, so we have someone saying they're from Tunisia. And uh, Barbara watching from Oregon. Nice. My friend Stefan is here. Good to see you. Hi, Andrew and Jonathan and Jack. Such a pleasure to be here. Can't believe the runways at Heathrow were melting. Stay safe. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. And, uh, you know, for those who comment from the Facebook groups, and it says Facebook user, just let me remind you to please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic so I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. That's the link underneath the live broadcast. It says StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Just give it a click. Give permissions. Jump on back. And... Uh, Speaking of StreamYard, let me get a little shout out to StreamYard, the multi-streaming app that makes all this possible. So I stream to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. You can also, I guess, stream to Twitch, which I haven't connected to, but it's a great, great professional app that makes it uh, easy. So here's a uh, little intro to StreamYard. <laughs> Thanks, StreamYard. So, let's see. So, once again, let us know where you're watching from, everybody. And uh, people are coming in. So, uh, Jonathan, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Jonathan Banks. Um, I've been a photographer for... Um, I'm not going to say actually because uh, it makes me look old. Um, so I've been a photographer for over 20 years, let's say that. Um, but it's all I've ever wanted to do. Um, and um, uh, it's been a, a long career. Um, and I would um, describe myself as a commercial slash um, humanitarian photographer. Great. And uh, shall I share your slides now? Shall we jump in? Yeah, let's, um, let's start with the first one, which is um, a photo of me and my first camera, um, which um, was the Kodak uh, Instamatic X, what it, X35F, and I got that at the age of eight. Um, right. And um, if we go to the next slide, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we went from there to here, which um, was shot in the lockdown. Um, I've just put out all the kit and um, uh, just to show what I have now. Um, and uh, for any techies out there, um, I buck the trend of, well, when I started out, everyone seemed to be Canon. I'm a Nikon user, um, and everyone seemed to be Mac. I'm a um, Microsoft um, or PC, um, always been on PC. In, in fact, I'll tell you a quick funny story. Uh, I shot a long time ago the iPod Shuffle uh, when it was first launched. Mm. I did some promo material for that, and... I had to go back in the uh, Apple head office uh, 
and they uh, said, can we download the pictures quickly? So I uh, got out my laptop and they went, what the hell is that? And I had a Sony <laughs> laptop at that time. Um, and I said uh, to them, pick up my bag. And they went, what? I went, pick up my bag. And they went to pick up the bag, which was extremely heavy. And I said, now feel the lightness of, uh, it was a carbon fiber, um, the lightest laptop on the market. Um, and uh, I said, Apple are not, they weren't making any of the light laptops they are. So maybe you should credit me for the, uh, the invention. The air. The air. You, invent oh. you invented the air. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is the story behind. Um, yeah. I've always been PC after that. It was me, uh, me too, actually, Jonathan. I just yeah. prefer PC. I don't know why. I think they're so close now. Uh, everything you can run yeah. on a PC, you can run on a Mac, I, as I understand it. Um, so, um, yeah, so that, that's me today. Um, and what I'd like to sort of dis talk about um, is uh, how my kind of career progressed. Um, and I'll talk about uh, some key images, some key projects. Um, and there will be other projects that will just sort of flick through to show you um, how I got to the next kind of key picture. Um, so there will be a lot of kind of um, images in between. Um, we, we literally just had a tech problem because I tried to uh, upload too many pictures and we were just cutting out just before we came live. But uh, we, got it. we got it now, though, so it's good. It's yeah. Good. So if we go to the next picture i'm just going to show you a few of me basically this is in um burkina faso um it was one of my first um big projects and it was mask dancers in burkina faso um it's extremely difficult to photograph uh the mark it was then anyway mask dancing um and uh this is in 2002 uh i spent two years setting it up and then um five weeks traveling around burkina faso going to all the different festivals um crazy temperatures involved if you think 40 degrees in britain is we hit 50 degrees on occasion wow. and obviously they cannot dance when they've got um a, a suit like that on um but that was one of my first projects a uh, big project um which you'll see uh, uh an image later on if we go to the next one um this is uh general photography in uh africa working for various charities and uh commercial clients as well i've done a lot for sainsbury's in um kenya tanzania uh where they grow beans and um uh uh, flowers they have there in South Africa. I've photographed um, grapes, apples, and pears. Uh, so that's me. There's a lot, lot of pictures of over my shoulder with cameras hanging down. But um, uh, it's kind of thankful to um, whoever's been travelling with me that's taken a few pictures along the way. Um, we go to the next one. Uh, you kind of have to stop. I, I, uh, we're, we're driving along and I saw the equator sign and I was like, stop. And they were like, what's the matter? What's the matter? And I said, we've got to get a photograph um, uh, in front of the equator sign. So um, that's me. That was the same as this trip in front of the equator sign. Um, and we go to the next one. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is um, photographing um, uh, African killer bees and the kind of clue is in the name there uh, that they're not that pleasant um, and I will divulge more later on because um, I've got uh, a couple of stories there and I've got the pictures to go with it so that was me in the um, African uh, bee suits uh, just before I think it's my first time going in to photograph the bees um, so I'm happy there. That, uh, that after that, I wasn't so happy. So yeah, next one. Um, this one's in Rwanda, um, photographing Great. for an organisation called Delagua. Um, <laughs> again, that will feature um, uh, later on. But um, I got the chance to go and see the um, the gorillas uh, in Rwanda, um, which was absolutely incredible. Um, we go to the next one. Okay, and uh, you have a. Question from Stefan. 
Stefan asks, yeah. uh, Jonathan, are you traveling much these days? If so, hope all the delays, et cetera, are not causing you issues. So um, travel has been challenging, obviously, for the last two years with the pandemic. Right. Um, one of my clients is um, Microsoft, and um, I was due to travel quite a bit in 2020, 2021, um, which changed uh, so that I did their assignments in the UK and a lot in Scotland, actually. I was up in the Orkney Islands, and we'll see some of the work, actually, a, a little bit later. Um, this year, I took my first international flight for a long time um, uh, to Washington, D.C. Uh, I have various trips on the cards, um, one to Ghana, potentially at the end of the year, um, maybe in the beginning of next year. Um, yeah, and it's not easy at the moment. It it, it it never was before with all the equipment and kit, but um, certainly now it's um, a, a challenge and a half with all the um, sure. uh, flight delays and everything. Um, so this is actually in Scotland, um, and a lot of them are on the Isle of Skye, uh, which has uh, incredibly um, diverse weather. So... Um, the team and I was photographing um, uh, salmon farming there. Um, uh, the the team that was with me um, started photographing me with uh, snow on the side of my face, and uh, you know it literally went from sun to tipping down with rain to snow on the side of my face to windy um, and. I tend to shoot a lot and different exposures. And when, when I was going through them, you saw this sky just kind of moving across the images so far, so rapidly. But it's a beautiful um, place, yeah. Um, it's fascinating. So we go to the next one. Yep. Uh, so I've worked in a few um, uh, challenging areas. Um, and um, I've shot all over Africa in various um civil war countries um this this is actually in um, mexico and people don't figure that mexico is dangerous but it um in i, I was working in chihuahua up north and chihuahua uh, the, the town that i was staying in was listed as one of the most dangerous areas in the world including all war zones um and so uh, I was working for an energy firm. Uh, it's basically um, you've got um, the biggest supplier of drugs uh, south of Mexico and right. potentially the biggest taker of drugs just north of it. So it's all kind of flowing through. Um, and um, uh, I, I was accompanied by uh, this guy. I actually, I had two other guys driving with me and this guy was um, uh, walking around with me all day. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it was it was an interesting time. We we could only travel uh, during the daytime and things like that. Um, we go to the next one, yep. uh, and then I, I shoot a lot of architecture. And um, it, it, I, like I say, I'm a really diverse photographer, and I apply same kind of thing to everything: um, the framing um, and. I just find that with architecture, it's a similar thing to um, every type of photography. It's storytelling in the end. You've got to understand what the designer uh, has done and then uh, converse that in a picture. So I, I, I work for some of the um, uh, biggest architects in the world and um, a photograph the top left is in um, uh, Batumi, which is in Georgia. Uh, the top right, obviously, Dubai. Um, bottom left is Dubai and the bottom right is Dubai as well, actually. Um, and the number of cherry pickers I go up. Um, one day I'll have to learn how to use a drone, but as of yet, I um, haven't branched out on that one. Um, so we go to the next one. And this is kind of a mix. So top left is um, a British Red Cross uh, campaign um, uh, for first aid. And that was shot in Liverpool uh, Street um, train station, uh, which is extremely complicated to uh, organize. Um, 
and uh, have people all around. But um, we did a shoot there. And then the next one along the top right is um, photographing for Microsoft. And um, the uh, my uh, colleague, the work colleague from Microsoft, um, said, you're not a photographer until you lie on the floor or a st stood on a step ladder. Um, so that was my uh, evidence that I was lying on the floor for them uh, to uh, capture something. The bottom left is, uh, uh, again, is an architectural kind of amusing shot that I, I thrown in. And then bottom right is um, uh, cod fishing in Iceland photographing. And um, we flew into Iceland um, quite late and uh, there was me and the film crew um, and we met the uh, guys from the boat. The weather was supposed to be um, sunny. So we were all kind of going, OK, what we, what are we going to do on the boat? I, I work with film crews all the time. So I know how to avoid getting in there. And often enough, if they're a good um, team, they know not to get in the way of you. Um, they were great. Um, but we were talking about hanging off the side of the boat, going up on the top and doing all these kind of crazy things. Um, and we got out there and although it was blue skies and everything, the swell was phenomenal. And we were out there for six hours and uh, for five and a half of them, I was throwing up every 20 minutes. It was absolutely draining. And it was literally me and the film crew, we, we, we did our bet. Well, we, we, we just carried on, but in between we were just um, throwing up over the side of the boat. It was pretty oh. um, horrendous. And as we came into the port, um, I was sat, I, I didn't want to go inside because um, uh, it smelled of really strong coffee and cigarettes. I'm not a smoker, so it didn't really do my stomach that good. Okay. So I sat outside on a sort of bench and every 30 seconds, a wave slapped me in the face, but I just didn't have the energy to move at that stage. I just, <laughs> just wow. stood. I just took it, you know, the entire time. Um, and we got out of the boat and the, um, the, uh, the PR guy said, um, right, we've got this, this, this and this to do. And we just all said, we're going to bed for two hours and then we'll see how, how, how we uh, fare after that. Um, so that yeah, that was pretty rough um, uh, trip. That one. Can we go to the next one. Yep. Uh, top left is uh, working for Drax, which is an energy firm, um, and that's in Mississippi with crazy heats there. In fact, uh, so again, traveling is uh, challenging with all the kit, and I um, have lost a lot of kit along the way. Often enough, it turns up in the end, but on Drax, I, it turned up on the last day. So if I lose a bag, um, it's full of kit. And, you know, I literally take my um, uh, entire um, uh, allowance and then I have a, a, a change of pants and a toothbrush virtually. Um, on this, I lost half the kit. So I have in my wheel on bag, I have my essential cameras but i lost a lot of the um the fun stuff um it did arrive like i say but on the last day so that was a very challenging trip i i, I lost all my clothes as well so i had to borrow clothes from some of the other guys uh, and it was ridiculously um uh, humid there um top right is uh, another microsoft shoot working at the uh, renault formula one they sponsor renault formula one and supply all their software and um uh computing stuff so um uh, I, I spent the day there which was great photographing and things like the wind tunnel and um, the uh, simulator um bottom left is again um microsoft but it's the um project natic which we'll see later on um bottom right is a uh, microsoft shoot up in glasgow again this has been uh a uh, project I've been doing um, it for a couple of years and will um, finish in Ghana next year. Um, I'm not going to say much about it because um, I'm NDA'd on that one. Um, but, um, yeah, you, you, it, it just shows you 
how many different places you go to and it's one of the privileges of being a photographer i think to see the different locations that i go to um so we go to the next one um so that's me on the boat and uh just behind me the guy on the um right is the drone operator so i had him fly the drone just slightly out from the boat uh and uh, photographed me and actually um if you look it's got the um jack it's got the sienna uh t i've got the sienna t-shirt on you can just yeah. see the end of it um uh which we'll talk about in a second but um we were out at sea and with um microsoft project natic and again we'll talk more about it is a, a project that they've um uh they put a data center underwater um data centers uh take up more energy than um well they're on par with all travel so all aviation all uh um, cars all train put together and it's accelerating um faster because whenever you like anything or save anything on your phone it's all going to a data center so um and uh it takes a, a lot of energy to cool them down they had the idea of submerging it, it underwater uh it uses submarine technology so it doesn't warm up the ocean but uses the uh chill factor and um the uh waves as a form of energy plus the um it, it was stationed just off the orkney islands which is completely 100 percent um uh, uh um, that the, all the power is on on wind and things like that so uh it was a fascinating project to do um but that that's uh, that's one of me on the uh, the boat if we go to the next one um so i i enter quite a few awards along the way and um and have been blessed with um getting quite uh, quite a few um good acknowledgements um and uh, that's the british photography awards um on the left uh, on the top right is the world sony photography awards at somerset house um where that my kids are a lot younger there they're now 19 and 16 um but i took them along and um promised them a uh, a really good quality burger if they came and persevered during the show so we, we went to see my work saw it and they went right let's go and get the burger i was like wait a second we've got to go around the whole exhibition now and they were like shut up we want the burger <laughs> that's, all that's we why did. they were there <laughs> <laughs> um but that that was um that was incredible and then um uh see me is a, an organization that organized um incredible places to show your work uh you entered into competitions so um the miami basil i've had work at and this is in times square and if you look um bottom left you can see um just next to the sea you can see my picture of the um african dancer oh yeah um, and just above that is a shot from Cuba, and above that is the um, boy from the crowd picking up the ball, which is the headline. <coughs> shot. I had three images on Times Square, which um, was incredible all, experience. All classics, classic images as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if we go to the next one, um, and then. Um, Places where I've exhibited my work have been uh, top left is at the Exposure um, uh, Festival in Dubai. Uh, top right is uh, actually an ongoing it's um, exhibition I have on at the moment at the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., which is Portraits of Resilience, which I'll talk about at, um, in a short time. Um, bottom left is at the... Um, international venice art fair i think it's called um where is it um venice international art fair um and the one on the right is uh in barcelona um and um yeah that was last year so um there's a few that i've exhibited at if we go to the next one uh and then in 2019, I won um, the C 
Siena um, International Photo Awards uh, Photographer of the Year um, for the picture behind, which is um, shot in Liberia, and is a boy picking up a, a small ball um, in the kind of um, just behind one of the security guards um and it was an ama amazing experience um and the sienna family um the super family are an incredible bunch i think you're one of them aren't you jack um yeah. and um uh it was a a great experience um bizarre serious honor right there jo jonathan to win Thank photography here from sienna and the and the beautiful pangea prize i can see there yeah yeah i did have this image of me uh picking it up and sliding on my knees to the front of the stage oh. but i decided that knowing my luck <laughs> i'd rip my suit and drop the uh the award and it would end in uh tears so i i, I ended up just doing that um but i actually got um quite a bit uh of uh criticism from <laughs> online yeah because i was celebrating uh, a humanitarian photo and um they criticized it i don't know why i mean if i'd have shot a landscape if i'd have shot um yeah. a portrait you know you wouldn't have got that but what i i'm not i'm not celebrating um you know uh the situation out there i was really pleased to have got that honor yeah. um, uh, and I think it comes down to what uh, Gigi Chung said last week, that photography is a sport. And that in the highest eclons of professional photography, this is one of the, the biggest, greatest prizes that one can win. So, you know, you're entitled and, to go mental, really, when you, you get and, that Pangea prize in your hands. And, and I don't see how they can't differentiate those two worlds. I mean, your work could be as political or as intense as possible but you celebrating it's not like you're celebrating their plight or anything no it's very Absolutely, strange yeah there's some sort of um you know suddenly i'm taking advantage of the situation and to be honest um it's weird i've always used my photography um to try and expose um uh the work of charities and the work that um these incredible organizations do and i volunteer my time all uh, more than i should to be honest um and uh this kind of picture um you know to win awards uh, it, it's strange because um it, in the past it was always try and show these kind of uh, situations editorial in newspapers and what have you uh and then we've got more photographers suddenly um showing them in galleries which is a great great space to show the work it does kind of hang something different on the work that you're kind of claiming it's um and i'm not saying it's not art but it, it does have a different feel if you show it in a magazine and you put it in a gallery um but i found that the awards are an amazing out let for photography as well and really highlights the organizations that i've been working with um so i've been entering awards for some time and i i, I don't know about you guys but for a long time i just didn't think my work was worthy of it and um I, it, it took a lot of courage to start entering awards and suddenly you kind of go actually this is yeah. this is great um it's it's a gauge on your work it's, but that's not what you do it for really it's um it's nice to be acknowledged it's great to go along to some of these things and uh chat with uh, other photographers and it's it's how i've kind of met you jack so yeah um it it is um it's a great kind of thing to do i, I think absolutely and so how did you find how did you find the beautiful city of siena I've been before, actually. Uh, I love Siena. Uh, I love Italy, actually, full stop. Um, Me too. And uh, we try and go uh, for a long weekend every year. I, I think Rome is um, possibly the greatest city in the world. It just has everything for me. And it hasn't been sterilised um, with Starbucks and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot yeah. of independent places, which I love. Um, Siena, I just found the people there amazing. The food is incredible. Yeah. Um, and um yeah it's it's a, a beautiful place and I, i'd like to go back every year almost you know um Absolutely. yeah 
So, um, yeah, if we go to the next one, it's the photo of me next to the image at the Siena Awards. Um, and, um, yeah, that's when they opened the – they have a sort of exhibition of all the work. So um, that was me in front of the picture. We'll talk about that picture um, uh, shortly. Um, but for now, I'm just showing you a quick, quick kind of review of my uh, – career um so if we go to the next one yep. okay so um <laughs> this this is important for a couple of reasons uh and um this is my family so um this is during lockdown it was the time where you couldn't get a haircut so i just said <laughs> let's do a lockdown haircut portrait joke one it actually got nominated for an award that's iconic um, Love yes. it. So I yes. shot it, but it, it's important for two reasons. Number one reason is that um, my family is more important than anything else on the planet. Um, so it's important to me. But also, so this is shot in 2021. Uh, I think it was January. Um, in 2020, in April, um, when we went into the first lockdown, I got covid without any vaccinations and i got it very very badly so i was ill for four and a half weeks in bed with a crazy temperature and i had long-term covid after that where i was exhausted um and uh in 2021 just after this portrait um in fact you can just slightly see it um it triggered alopecia and i lost my hair so I lost my hair in uh, five months from that to uh, to this, basically. Oh. Um, from long term COVID. Yeah, from long term COVID. Oh. So alopecia is um, uh, kind of stress related and um, uh, it's a big shock to the body, which is normally um, something like a, a divorce or a death in the family and what have you. For me, it was my body was fighting COVID um, so badly. Uh, sorry, and it just sorry kind that of, No, no, no. It's uh, At the end of the day, it's it's your hair. It doesn't kind of make you who you are. Um, it's so, kind of strange. So just to say, it. though, I thought, that, I thought that you did it as a, a creative choice. The, the, I thought that you shaved your head as a creative choice. So No. So, um, yeah, they, they say it might grow back, but uh, who can tell? Everything's healthy there, you know, but yep. – um, yeah, it's yeah. all gone. So um, I've got a, a fantastic hat collection now. That's the uh, that, that's the way <laughs> forward. Yeah. Um, so if we go to our first slide, um, so I've wanted to be a photographer um, since I was about thirteen. I got my first camera when I was eight. You saw it, the Kodak Instamatic, um, and. Um, I came from a very scientific family. My uh, father was um, a biochemist, um, uh, but he did love photography. And he took me, I think one of the um, significant moments was he took me to the South Bank to t see two exhibitions. And we went to see Ansel Adams' exhibition, which um, I was just blown away by the craft of photography. And then he took me to um, Eugene Smith exhibition and I was blown away by uh, his compassion um, and uh, behind photography. Uh, and that really kind of kick-started the desire of wanting to be a photographer. Um, and after that, I pursued, mag you know, I, I, I read everything that I could about Magnum photographers um and love things like um uh the americans robert frank uh chris killip's work um and many many more um and um uh i, I talked to my mum because uh she dug out that photo of me with a camera and she said her moment was we did a holiday um at the age of nine, we went to Santorini and I shot a load of material there. And it was it was back in the day of film. It was processed and printed. And she went in to pick it up. And uh, the guy said, um, whose work is this? Uh, and she said, it's uh, my son's. And he goes, no, it's not. And she said, yeah, 
And he goes, this is the greatest work I've seen ever, mm. basically. And it was like she suddenly went, wow, kind of thing. And she was telling me this story um, yesterday. I kind of recall it. Um, I think she's um, embellished it a little bit, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, Was this work from Santorini in Greece? Yeah. Just, cool. just yeah. Uh, I mean, now it's a massive, it, it's listed in the top 10 places to go for photographers uh, for that sunset kind of area. Um, and when we went there, it was... Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we weren't from a well-off, uh, we're, we're uh, from a science uh, family that worked for the government. So um, uh, we were in a, 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 a cheap kind of B&B uh, &B place, um, but it was on the right side of the island, which is now the pricey side of like, the island. So I would go off and photograph these incredible sunsets or just the streets of uh, Santorini and everything and got some incredible street photography. So, yeah. So then uh, I went on to um, study um, uh, photography at Derby, the University of Derby, um, and I did a, a degree there. And in my final um, uh, project, um, the, the, so there are a number of different um, degree courses in the UK, and um, the University of Derby is quite a fine art one um, and it's headed up by John, well it was then, John Blakemore, uh, Richard Sadler um, and I kind of um, struggled with some of the fine art elements because I was then, you know, uh, a wannabe magnum photographer, a, a documentary reportage style. So um, uh, I, I did my final degree project in Cuba um, where I, I basically put together enough money to get there, but not much more. And I was living on um, uh, two packets of noodles a day uh, while I was out there. But I got sponsored by Kodak um, for it. So they supplied all the film. Um, and um, I shot both black and white and colour um, a book worth of... Um, photographs that, that was actually almost published at one stage um and this was one of the it is the kind of um the headlining image of it um and it summed up a lot for me um it was um the book was called tenacious roots and it was um the kind of demise of um marxist communism as we know it uh the um this is 1991 ish um and um, Russia had sort of um, changed its communism. So Cuba was really the last kind of bastion of um, communism in the world. So I was interested in sort of documenting that. And this kind of has this uh, reference to the past and a sort of um, a progressive future and a, um, uh, a mix of uh, different people in the shot. Um, so I kind of summed that up. And so this kind of shot, um, I shot maybe five frames of this and I've got a sort of sequence of five frames where, you know, one of the guys have looked up, another guy have looked down and you get, kind of get this kind of sequence. And this one I just love because it just, just completely ignores me. Um, for me, the, the best photographs that I like are... Um, there's a composition to this image where um, if I was to plan it out, I wouldn't plan that out. Yeah, I wouldn't cut that guy. I wouldn't do, you know, as it was. And I love that I've shot it like that and it really works. The guy's back is unimportant, basically. We just want to see that half figure. Uh, my um, my uncle was a, was a big photographer and he never understood these kind of elements. And for me, you know, uh, uh, photography is all about rule breaking um, and uh, coming up with new compositions and, you know, um, experimenting a lot. And for me, this kind of picture just all came together um, and works really well. Um, so, yeah, if we go to the next one. Um, so this is uh, one of those pictures that is ridiculously simple but it's it's having the eye to see it and um uh 
the thing that I kind of um, go back to is um, uh, a joke, actually. And it's um, how many photographers does it take to change a light bulb? 500. One to change it and 499 to say, I could have done that. And that's the thing. A lot of photographers will look at certain shots and go, well, I could have taken that. And possibly, yeah, you would see it as well. But this, to me, kind of summed up the whole kind of transition of Cuba to capitalism, communism to capitalism. And uh, this this one has won a few awards. Um, and it, it, I, I hadn't got a title for it for a long time. And um, I came up with... Um, uh, a title in the end and it's called um visa dot communism um because it kind of play on the whole website thing of dot com uh thing so it kind of um for me it kind of sums it up and everything and this was just a sign on a um a tourist coach that was there um and back in the, the sort of early 90s there were very few um uh, there was not so much tourism as there is today um so yeah, that was my uh, degree project basically, um, and I shot a mixture actually of black and white and color. Back then, it was all film, Kodak, um, and it was um, exhibited in London, a few uh, places with Kodak. Um, and then I started to, I kind of built up a relationship with Kodak um, and spoke for them for a while. Went to different events and talked about the work, talked about the product, etc. Um, yeah. So we can go to the next picture. Um, so in the early days, I worked um, for the um, Daily Telegraph, the Times, um, uh, and the sort of broadsheets. Um, and I did um, news in the UK. I did business. I did, you kind of did different um, uh, genres um, in different weeks, etc um and um uh, i shot for agencies as well um rex features um and um i was in the states i was actually in uh uh yosemite uh, at the time in 9 11 and we, we were on holiday so um we weren't watching the news or anything like that and um uh, we were due to be in new york a couple of days later and at breakfast time we find out that um 9 11 had happened so um got back to san francisco and um uh, i wanted to try and fly to new york um but flights weren't going internally what we could do is uh, which seems crazy i managed to get a flight from san francisco to london and then in half a day back again to new york and got there I think I was there a day, two days after. And so I kind of wanted to document the aftermath of 9-11. And um, I photographed um, uh, Ground Zero and the work going on there. Um, but I found that there were, you know, tons and tons of photographers. Um, and uh, it was more interesting to me to find something unique so i went on and began um uh, photographing the surroundings if we go to the next one and i found that memorabilia was being sold pictures of the towers coming down t-shirts with um 9 11 and i found this kind of interesting and kind of bizarre in a way so i, I started photographing that and i photographed a lot of people as well i talked to lots of people and i have this kind of series of shots of firefighters, just normal people off the street, um, which to me meant a lot more than, you know, some of the pictures at ground zero. Um, uh, so yeah, that was, that was one of my kind of big um, foreign assignments to begin with. So we go to the next picture. So then, you know, in the, in the papers, I was photographing a lot of the premieres and I was trying to make them much more than, so I would be the guy inside uh, receiving all the stars and everything and um, have a sort of studio set up. Um, and this is the aviator uh, with uh, Leonardo um, shot for uh, newspaper and magazines and what have you. Um, I was 
I'm, I'm always looking for something different rather than just looking in the camera and, every, and and to be honest at premieres you often just get you know a couple of minutes um i was actually more interested i wasn't that interested in leonardo uh, i was more interested in scorsese that was kind of next coming in i was like whoa man this is a, a massive um skip to photograph so um what what i kind of want to show is a rank that ha how i am diverse and how i apply that in my humanitarian photography so if we go to the next picture oh this is the um um masks of Burkina faso that i uh, that you saw me uh, photographing one of the uh, first pictures um again you know it, it's incredible heat out there um it's listed as the third poorest country in the world um and so i was photographing and dancing but i love this kind of um collapsed scene uh of the masks um and this is my first self-funded assignment which i kind of did all the research behind organized the guides um and um uh, traveled with someone all around Burkina Faso um and uh went to several different festivals and yeah, this this was one of my favorite shots from it so we go to the next one um so from from shooting with agencies and newspapers um i was involved in the kind of transition between film and digital uh working for newspapers and um i saw i suddenly saw this whole thing of um uh um the photograph being devalued basically because beforehand with film there was kind of this special aura about photography i guess with digital it opened up for other people um and it actually i, I believe it improved a lot of people's photography which is great um and when i was working for the newspapers i suddenly realized that um you know there wasn't a um i i, I was being offered more commercial work so i started doing commercial work and i i, I began um looking at the way people were photographing commercial work and thinking you know what i can make this look great as well we don't have to just show what they do this is um this is the energy firm actually that it's not in chihuahua but it's a different location in mexico um and um i started working for various companies and um uh, producing some um you know really interesting and i was interested in it, in it as well i mean when someone says uh, you've got to go and photograph a power station there's, there's a certain type of person that says oh that's going to be really dull I, I kind of find it fascinating because it's the people behind the power station that is amazing so i kind of wanted to create different shots and approach it in a different way uh, and that's what i started doing i still i've always done the charity work so i've always got that but I, I kind of have to you saw I, I have a family so I kind of run the family but and I volunteer my time a lot um, but I need to pay my way in a way so this this is how I kind of paid the way um, so we go to the next one um, this is um, uh, in Kenya and it's um, uh, beans um, for Sainsbury's and they wanted me to document um, or photograph various different uh, produce that they um, farm out there. So we did flowers and we did uh, apples and pears and grapes and everything. And again, it's it's applying what I do normally in um, my sort of documentary uh, uh, work, but in a different way and um, capturing something special, a special moment. And here, um, I, I went out in the fields and I just thought I want to catch a life uh because they support the local community i kind of wanted a spinner um or not spin uh show a, a positive note to it and um uh i i don't my, my problem is that i don't speak uh i speak a tiny tiny bit of french um but i don't speak any languages especially out in africa however i do speak the international language of football and that goes a long way if you mention a premiership team in africa 
everyone suddenly is around you and talking football. So it's kind of a way that leads me into um, a lot of situations when I'm chatting about um, football over there. And you just kind of mentioned English Premiership um, uh, players and they're all kind of... Um, then they've got an opinion on which side and what have you. Um, but yeah, that's... Um, that was shot for Sainsbury's and uh, was used in a lot of marketing uh, material. So we go to the next one. Um, this was more recently for um, Vashi um, and um, I was tasked to photograph their um, new stores in London, but also do some um, promotional marketing material for them. So, um, uh, it's shot in the same sort of style of documentary photography, but with a uh, big lighting kit uh, would would be all around this um, guy. And um, it, it's far more technical, this kind of um, photography. But I've, I kind of believe that as a photographer, I need to carry on learning. So I'm constantly learning. Uh, I, you know, I've used Photoshop for um, 25 years, but I'm not going to pretend that I'm uh, incredible at it. And I'm always finding new things and I always learn new things through people I talk to, through uh, seminars I do or tutorials that I do. Or I think it's really important to increase our knowledge all the time. And um uh learn new stuff and try and break the routines that we do we kind of get into these routines of i know how to process an image it's this 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 and this and actually you work alongside a um an assistant or a, a fellow photographer and they'll do it somehow differently i'm sure you've come across this jack and andrew where they'll, they'll show you something and you go whoa or you'll show them something and they'll go whoa you know um so we're all learning yeah we're all learning all the time and um yeah um that's that's uh that's why i wanted to include and this one i also like your ethos jonathan that art has no rules i'm a big subscriber to that myself sometimes Definitely. sometimes breaking the rules uh is a big positive i think it's a really exciting time in photography um and it it, it uh it sort of cements it when you look at the photographers of the Influx Gallery, um, because there's such a range there with people doing really exciting work where you just kind of go, wow, man, you've taken this and you've supersized it and thrown chocolate all over it as well. I mean, it's just amazing how, <clears throat> you know, someone kind of runs away with one thing that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and that's that to me is really exciting, having all that information and then applying it in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. So if we go to the next one. Um, so this is the Project Natic. This is the data center in uh, just off of Orkney. And um, Microsoft asked me to um, actually photograph it uh, going down. But um, uh, just just I had a hernia op um, just before it was happening. So I couldn't photograph it when it was submerged, but in actual fact, it was more interesting when it came up. Um, but we were out there at sea and um, everything's on the weather and Orkney weather is really quite changeable. So um, uh, when they gave us the green light, it was a, uh, they gave us the green light on the Tuesday. We had to be there on the Thursday. So I had to book flights, hotels, uh, and I had to book a flight and then get in a car fully packed drive to the airport, fly to, I think it was uh, Edinburgh, get a hire car, drive up to uh, the ferry, and we made it by two hours to spare, and then get the ferry across. And it was just so, and there was me and a drone guy, so I took a, a drone operator. We had two drones flying uh, around it. We had an underwater drone as well filming it, um, and it was a massive operation, but incredible. And the drone guy said, you know, to calibrate a drone is very difficult out on a boat. Beautiful because there's no pylons to hit. But when we were flying it back in, it was attacked by seagulls. And we got this footage of the seagulls kind of diving in front of the uh, the drone and everything. If we go to the next one. So when it came out of the water, and that's the data center there, it was being lifted up on that vessel that we saw earlier. 
and it was designed so it could go on the back of a lorry so it's a circular drum essentially um so they're cleaning off all the um uh the muck and the the barnacles and everything um uh, in that shot i had to photograph all the different sort of stages if we go to the next one um and then it was uh driven back to inverness and they uh took off the cap um and this is um the chief um engineer and actually one of the principal uh designers of it um uh looking at the drives to see and uh the success rates was so much better than on land data centers and it's because on land data centers you have change of temperature um and people uh constantly walking through and they bump different things that just knocks will um affect all the drives and everything whereas underwater it had it was full of nitrogen not oxygen there were no knocks uh it was a stable a temperature and everything so success rate was fantastic so this is when they first opened it up and um uh they just said it's tight i mean the, the space is absolutely minuscule they said um we're going to go in and going to have a look and I, as a photographer i'm always can i go up there can i do that can i do that and i said can i go inside and they went yeah yeah you can go inside so with one camera two lenses and three flash guns which i inter I, i've kind of hidden behind uh, at different places and uh, pocket wizards to um, control them all i went in first went to the back and photographed looking um out towards spencer looking through the racks um i didn't include it in this um set but i got him to take a picture of me in there as well uh, just to say, say that i was there but um it was incredibly cramped conditions and everything um but i just uh, it's one of my favorite shots from the um the series um so yeah so we go to the next one uh so just very quickly, I'll go through the architecture stuff. I've, I've shot architecture all, all along. And for me, again, it's it's a thing about storytelling, learning what the designer um, wants and going to photograph it. And um, that's the, the BBC. Uh, I, I was one of two photographers that was allowed in. Um, the BBC is a gigantic. And um, I was given... Um, two and a half days to shoot it in and it took us half a day just to walk the um the space to be shown around it um and uh it's designed by hawk uh, um architects uh and um this won quite a few architectural awards and I, I kind of titled it uh rural britannia because it's kind of it looks like the kind of union jack and it's very british the old bbc so um that's kind of one of my favorite interiors if we go to the next one um that's at the o2 icon outlet village um and it was the ceiling designed to let in a lot of light um by a um architect called uh Carlson rtkl um and i shot uh, loads and loads of other um pictures of the the space below and everything but i love that kind of for me it's like a ribbon roof light um system um so um yeah, that's that one. Next one. Um, and do you remember at the beginning we saw the camera set up for this shot? Um, this was for an architect that uh, um, redeveloped uh, Le Mer beachfront, which is this beachfront. And um, I was asked to photograph um, uh, actually on the beach and do all that kind of thing. Um, and I managed to get this position where which I really wanted to get to. So I showed Dubai behind it um, to give it context rather than just it looked like a different, a, a, another beach basically. Um, and um, got this inc incredible kind of uh, skyline uh, of the beach with the, the city behind it. Um, so next. Um, and this is um, just recently actually uh, which you can see um it's the queen's jubilee um and um they uh, asked me to photograph the tree of trees which is in the center there which uh, was designed by heatherwick studio thomas heatherwick that um designed the vessel 
um, and the Olympic torch for Great Britain, uh, amongst a lot of other incredible um, uh, pieces of architecture. Um, and the Tree of Trees celebrates um, the uh, Green Canopy uh, project, which is to grow more trees uh, in cities. Um, and it's a sculpture with um, over 300 trees, um, saplings, or they're, they're quite big actually, um, uh, attached to it that will be planted around Britain. And it's uh, it started the whole light show um, at the Jubilee. So. I had to go along um, and they, um, they phoned me and said, can you photograph either on Monday or Tuesday? And I said, I'm already shooting on Tuesday, so I'll do Monday. And uh, they said, actually, Mon Monday's not so good weather, so can you do Tuesday? So I was like, well, then you're asking Tuesday, aren't you? Uh, so I basically went at dawn, did my other job, and then at dusk, and it was pretty, pretty bad weather that day, um, but just... In the morning there was a clearance and in the evening this is one of the last shots that i took um i just got this dramatic skyline and they lit up uh buckingham palace with those colors as a test run um and what was quite cool i had uh, alicia keys playing in the background uh, which i thought it was just the um, music going on but the uh the police that were guarding around they were going it's Alicia Keys. It's Alicia Keys. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I shot that for um, just recently. Um, so architectural interior uh, photography is um, a, a different kettle of fish when it comes to Photoshop work. It's um, uh, much more skilled, um, and I've been doing it for a long time, so I kind of know what to get out of a picture now. Um, but um, there's quite a bit of work that goes into all these kind of things. So we go to the next one. So this kind of leads all the way to um, uh, my humanitarian photography work. And um, I've always wanted to use my photography to bring awareness to some of the organizations that I support and um, appreciate. And I am, um one of the longest serving and volunteering photographers for the british red cross um photographing everything from um events to marketing material to um uh, incidents to um uh, from this country and abroad um and um i love the organization um charity work is challenging to do uh it's not all always organized you have to think on your feet um it's either no pay or very little pay i'm uh i break equipment and all that kind of stuff but there's something incredibly rewarding about doing it and um uh i, I love uh, applying myself and thinking outside the box uh when it comes to photographing and I, I volunteer my time quite a bit in for different charities and um, uh, don't tell my commercial clients this, but when when you take the element of uh, getting paid out of it, um, you're only shooting for yourself. It's like going out on the weekend. Um, and, uh, you know, I, unfortunately, as a, a professional photographer, I never go out of the weekend and just shoot stuff for fun. Uh, I, I know it sounds bad, but... You know, I've got family and all this kind of stuff. So it's only when I do something like this and I'm volunteering my time that I can play and have an experiment and I'm shooting for myself as well as understanding what is in front of me. But, um, uh, yeah, um, that's that's why I kind of work with the Red Cross. If we go to the next one. So that's some of the marketing materials. So you can see, you know, it's applying my other skills for the uh, commercial work to a charity where they wouldn't have um, the budget to produce a, 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 um, a high-class campaign or anything. But I'll bring along my knowledge and um, kit and produce something that um, is a standout, and I, I enjoy doing that. Um, yeah, so next one. Uh, and the events. So, 
This was um, a garden party uh, in 2008, and um, it was horrendous weather. Um, and my photograph was, I was told to be there to photograph the red arrows flying over the top of Buckingham Palace um, with the, um, uh, do you know what the red arrows are, Andrew? No, I was... The red wondering. arrows are these sort of acrobatic um, jets that... Um, okay have smoke with different colors sure and they do somersaults and that kind of thing so they were going to fly over the top red white and blue and all this kind of stuff um but uh so i was waiting there and i was getting a call of uh it's 10 minutes to go the red arrows would be there and everything and i was absolutely drenched i mean absolutely soaked to the uh bone um and uh while i was waiting i saw all the red cross vehicles uh, lining up in front and I thought let's go and get that photo so I went and got the photo um, got back into position and then got the phone call literally four minutes before now they've pulled out you're not going to get the shot so it was a real kind of disappointment because that was going to be on the front cover and uh, the Red Cross were like what are we going to do now and I, I said well I've got this shot of all the Red Cross vehicles in front of Buckingham Palace and they saw that shot and this ran on a lot of the newspapers um, as a, and it's one of those things you just kind of have to, although you get a brief, you have to kind of think outside the box and look for the shot because the brief is all based on what they hope will happen. And it, that that's not always the case. So we go to the next one. So yeah, it's, it's a it's sort of documentary photography for the British Red Cross. And this was called skin camouflage. Um, and it's, um, for burns victims and it's teaching burns victims how to apply makeup um, to uh, obscure their um, uh, scars etc and it's a, a wellness thing um, so it was all different kind of um, uh, shoots that I was doing which I, I kind of like that um, it's you have to think on your feet when you get there and work out the angle how are you going to tell the story um, and um, how do you make it so that you see the um, applying of, and I don't set my shots up. I kind of um, watch what happens and then work out where I need to be and then um, get get the shot that I require. So we go to the next one. Um, so in 2005, I went to Chernihiv in um, the Ukraine. And obviously I'm uh, pretty devastated uh, with the current situation there. And I went there um, with a charity to photograph the after effects of Chernobyl uh, at the polyclinic in uh, Chernihiv. And I spent, um, uh, I think it was about uh, a week and a half there, photographing, they test and monitor all children born. Um, and um, uh, I, I just shot this series of uh, images for the charity. I love this one because the wallpaper is just, incredible and it throws the eye of what's going kind of going on and i love that kind of uh play um if we go to the next one um and so a lot of a lot of photography is uh, for me it's composition and capturing sometimes that moment um and i i walked into this room and they said oh they're going to be uh, doing injections in this room i walked in and that she was literally um, moving in for that and normally I like to like I said watch and then you know get in position so this was kind of a grabbed image but it was caught and I don't use motor wines or anything like that I'm not I'm not firing like that this was just a bang shot it and it's just caught that moment of the three different expressions the calm nurse giving the injection the mother kind of staring at it in a almost comical way and then the child screaming almost before it's gone in you know it's that kind of whole thing and um yeah that was that was one of my um favorite shots from that um we go to the next one and then it's finding those moments that are slightly amusing and it's the same same um place but uh, this this to me just um it's it's, a, it's obviously lighter and everything but it's 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 association um and you know, looking for that in photographs is important as well. It's finding that kind of association. Um, and was I conscious of that at the time? I don't know. 
Um, I'd like to think I was, but uh, I certainly saw it afterwards and thought, yeah, that's that makes for a, um, a, a, a clever picture, as it were. So we go to the next. So another charity that I've worked with um, for a long time is um, an organization called International Alert. They're um, uh, a peace organization that work in civil war countries. Um, and uh, civil war countries um, often fall back into civil war after a few years of peace. Um, so International Alert um, set up um, uh, things like radio stations um, and um, encourage constant dialogue. Um, and in Liberia, they had a um, uh, festival that all the tribes that were uh, in conflict before would come together and showcase something from their particular region, whether it was dance, whether in this case fire, or uh, there was magic, there was singing, there was all this different stuff going on. And I photographed the talks behind the scenes, but also the events that were happening in front. Um, and when I when I went to this, I, I did it um, two years in a row. Um, this was in the capital in Monrovia. Um, and uh, on the morning of um, this festival, um, one of the marketing guys said, um, uh, he, he was a photographer as well, he was an uh, enthusiast. Um, and he said, I'm not sure why we've got you here, Jonathan, because um, uh, I can do all the photography and everything. And that that kind of spurred me to shoot the best stuff I could do. So if we go to the next picture. So that was shot on that same day. Um, and it's a dancer that I'd met earlier on um, and thought looked incredible. And I photographed him a few shots. But... Um, it was when he was um, kind of getting ready. And then um, as he was, he came up on the stage and there was, um, I'm looking out towards the crowd. Um, on the right hand side of him is the act that's going on and he's just waiting to, to go on. And there was this incredible sky that I photographed a bit, but I knew that I needed something powerful in front of it. Um, and he stood up there and I shot maybe nine frames of him uh, looking in all directions. Obviously, he knew that I was photographing and I've used some film flash as well. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer of uh, a little bit of um, film flash to make it look natural. Obviously, if you shot this, it's quite a bright background. Um, you wouldn't get the picture that you were seeing. And that's the important factor for me. Uh, there's a lot of people go, oh, it's not natural if you've got flash or you're, you're doing this kind of thing. For me, it's all about what I saw. And if I can replicate what I saw, then it doesn't matter what I use, whether it's flash guns or filters or whatever. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't use filters or whatever. But I do use photo, uh, Photoshop to enhance, to bring out colors, because often enough it's washed out. So... This shot, um, yeah, it's just a little bit of fill and flash. Um, and I just love the way he's just um, looking up rather than straight at the camera. And I've got a few where he's looking at the camera. But he was quite, I guess, shy in a way. Um, but I, I just see this as him being very dignified. He looks very kind of powerful there. Um, uh, so I kind of knew on the day, I knew that I got this shot. Um, you kind of have a feeling for it. And I, I kind of knew that I got a great shot. What I didn't know was the next shot. So this was shot exactly on the same day. And it was, so if we go to the next one, um, it's it's the one that won the, um, the Siena Award. It's won a couple of others. It's been exhibited all over. And um, I, I didn't know that this was going to be as powerful as it is. Um, and it's, for me, it's, it's technically extremely difficult to shoot because the uh, depth of focus is not great and it pins sharp on his eyes. You've got this element of him picking up the ball, which I, I didn't see at the time. Um, but what I did see is I started out photographing the security that were there and um, uh, they were... Um, 
they weren't really wanting to be photographed to be honest they were pretty aggressive um and i started looking at the crowd and thinking actually the crowd's more interesting so i started focusing in the background picking out different people and i just saw movement i just saw movement that's what drew it to me focused on the movement and caught this and i've got so i i like to go back because when when you uh, when it's been awarded, they, they've uh, the Seeker asked me the story behind it. So I went back to look at the sequence of shots, and actually the sequence of shots are nothing. He's not in the frame, and then he launches forward, and I get this shot, and then there's a shot after. There's no kind of halfway or anything like that. That is the one shot of him leaning forward. Um, so um, yeah, the. Um, that 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 uh, became a, a very powerful shot, and when I went through the images later in the day, I saw it. I still didn't pick it out, and then when I did my final edit, it was like, no, this is this is. Um, I, I think it's more powerful than the previous one, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of story behind that. If we go to the next picture, um, so one of the other projects I went around the. Caucasus, uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan um, are in dispute over a country called Ngora Karabakh, which is uh, in the middle. And um, this is shot in Ngora Karabakh. It's uh, an unrecognized country. Um, and I did a series of uh, meetings with International Alert. But if we go to the next picture, I did what. Well, what I like the idea of doing photographs um, <clears throat> of people from each area. So I photographed um, this uh, plaster in, in Gora Karabakh. Go to the next one. Um, I shot um, this is um, a fish fish merchant in a market in um, uh, Armenia. And then the next one is a lad in a bus in Azerbaijan. And I got this whole idea that um, it was actually someone, what someone said at the conference, um, conflict is not the division of land, but the division of people. So I kind of started photographing the people from the different areas and put it together with this title um, of portraits that show conflict. You know, um, I couldn't go to the front line and, uh, and, and photograph the um, the war that's going on it's quite a um it is a hot war and people die uh, all the time but it's not like um uh and I, I just thought this was a clever way of expressing a conflict of showing different people where there's a war going on but um actually these people are carrying on with their lives etc um so that that was um that won a few awards and was exhibited uh, in a number of different places um, and it, it was featured at the, um, the UN building um, in I think it's Geneva um, so yeah so if we go to the next one uh, again this is in Georgia which was in uh, 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 had the sort of refugee fallout from some of the uh, Caucasus uh, disputes. So uh, we went to Georgia and we photographed some of the uh, refugees that were there. Um, so the next one. Um, so Comet Relief is another charity that I've worked with. Um, Sport Relief, Comet Relief. Um, and again, it's just showing, you know, you have to photograph all different things. In the middle there, you'll see a chap in black roughly and to his right there's a uh, a runner with um the red um uh, logo on that is david cameron so i was set up to photograph david cameron in the masses um and i wanted to show big ben and where it was as well so um they put me in this uh, special area right in the front and everyone kind of ran around me. Um, and um, yeah, that was, that was the shot that I took for them. If we go to the next picture. Uh, I photographed for um, Farm Africa and uh, Farm Africa uh, works with um, uh, people out in a number of different uh, countries in Africa um and they help them finance equipment uh find um organize loans um advise them on 
better techniques, etc. Um, and so I covered sesame seeds, which is uh, what we have here, um, which sesame seeds was not too difficult to photograph, as you can see. Next one. Uh, and the sifting tool to get the sesame seeds. Next one. And then so Farm Africa supply them places to store the grain so that they can wait if the price of the sesame seed is low, then they can store it and wait for a higher price at a different time. If we go to the next one. And then at the same time, we photographed African killer bees. And you saw me in my suit earlier. Um, African killer bees are extremely aggressive. Um, and uh, I was I went in a couple of times. Um, they are the most dangerous thing um, that I animal or creature that I photographed. And I've sat on the back of crocodiles, photographed hippos really close. Um, saw the gorillas. Um, uh, the African killer bee. Um, as soon as we went up. Uh, uh, like a swarm around you so i've got a swarm around me all over the lens and everything um it's so loud it's almost like a wind around you um and it was a kind of african um uh, suit with holes under the arms uh and the bees start to come in uh so you start getting them around um they told me that um it's not to be not good to be stung too many times in one location. Um, and if we go to the next slide. Um, and, and Jonathan, how, how many more slides are there? Just because um, people. Uh, we've got about 10 more, I think. Okay. Should we, we, should we skip through some? So that that's that. Uh, I was stung a lot of times on my hand. If we go to the next one. Ooh, that was my hand. So that swelled up for three weeks um from uh bee stings um three weeks wow that's a long time too. yeah so we go to the next one um i worked in uh, rwanda on a book for delagua delagua um uh, were tackling uh a, a, sort of a trying to change the a, a nation's health um and um uh drinking fresh water um, or water straight from uh, rivers um, and um, breathing in fires were the two uh, um, elements that um, people die from uh, a lot. So if we go to the next one. So I had to sort of document that and show, you know, the fire, the firewood, it's not good for the environment. If we go to the next one, uh, next slide. Um, so Delag was set up um, this, um, uh, um system of bringing local uh, people in having a kind of um uh, a day where they distributed if we go to the next picture um water filters so these are water filters given out to the poorest uh families um and they you, they do what you, it sounds like you put the water in the top and it filters out all the horrible things um so the fresh water um and it's monitored so there's a, a chip in there that they can um monitor on a phone if we go to the next one uh so i kind of documented this whole thing and it became a book um and it won the sony um photography awards go to the next one um so again this was all kind of shot um naturally we didn't set up anything we, I shot 10,000 frames on this trip. So it was a, a phenomenal amount of uh, photography. Here's the next one. And, and education played a high uh, part of it. So um, I had to sort of represent education in a way. And this was this young lad waiting for school. Next one. Okay. And, and enjoyment of water, etc. So we go to the next one. So this is the last series of uh, pictures. And this is a recent project that I've been working on for the last six years. From um, the trip to Rwanda, um, my um, driver and guide over there wasn't just the normal driver and guide. Um, he was more intelligent than anyone else in the car, uh, including me by a long way. And um, 
I kept in contact with him afterwards and he went on to become um, uh, the director of um, Task International. Um, Task International is um, the uh, Torture, Abolition and Survivors Support Coalition. So they deal with um, refugees from around the world, different countries that have experienced torture in one way or another. Um, and I wanted to produce, I, I, I was interested in the work that he was doing. So I, um, he said, go and, go and have a look at the website and read through the stories. So I read through the stories and they were incredibly powerful. But the, um, the pictures alongside were just some guy in the corner of a room. And I said, the pictures aren't as powerful as the stories. Um, and um, uh, Leon's the director, said, um, the problem is, is we, um, not everyone wants to be um, recognised in their photographs. So we can't show a lot of them because um, someone that has escaped their country, um, there are sometimes repercussions for their family uh, if they're recognized online or something like that. So I had to come up with a concept to obscure some people, but have a series of photographs that um, had a kind of common feature. So I came up with this idea of um, asking each person to select a picture that was meaningful to them. And I pro produced a, um, a digital um, file and I projected that with a, like a slide projector but a digital projector onto them um and i double projected it so that i took away the you normally get this um black shadowing behind uh but we worked out the system of double projecting and so i produced this kind of series so here you can recognize there's someone there but you don't see who the features are um and this uh has been a project that have been working on for five years with task um and uh, each picture is accompanied by their story and a description about what the picture is. Um, and uh, this is uh, Tekola, he's from Ethiopia, and he selected um, a tree that would have been um, the meeting place for um, his uh, group where they would have sorted out everything. Um, but he is from a... Um, uh, a, a, a sort of ethnicity that um, the government um, don't uh, recognise, so he can't get certain jobs and he has no rights and all this kind of thing. So um, it, it's uh, uh, currently being exhibited in the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., um, and it will be there till the end of the uh, month. Um, they produced a book, um, for with all the work, um, there's Tacola's image um, with his story. Um, so if we go to the next picture, um, so this is uh, Ruban, and um, he was the editor um, of the first. Um, uh, wait a second, uh, let's get this right. Um, uh, LGBT and gay magazine in uh, Bangladesh, um, which criminalizes um, uh, his sexuality. Um, so he organized a um, festival, which was called a Rainbow Festival, um, along with his colleague. Um, and uh, you can see in the background, uh, his colleague was um, uh, murdered by the uh, military police after it happened so he had to escape from the country he obviously doesn't want to be recognized and uses the pseudonym um, as his name now uh, we go to the next slide uh, this is desire uh, uh, malpa uh, from cameroon again criminalized for um, his sexuality and they used to make him or they used to make people crawl through mud to dehumanize them um, in Cameroon. And that's the picture that he selected. If we go to the next one. Uh, this is jean Frederic A. Batitas from Togo. And he's a, an artist that uh, has political messages in his art. And I love that kind of projection of his art over the top of him to produce another piece. That's cool. Um, yeah. So sorry for going on too long. Um, uh, 
but uh, that's my last slide. Um, I, I want to thank you, Andrew, uh, and Digital Artist um, for um, having me on today. I want to thank Jack as well for um, doing an incredible job with um, the Influx Gallery. You've put together an incredible uh, selection of photographers, and I'm honoured to be asked, to be honest. Um, it's a so, great, great variety of work. Great to see. Yeah, some absolutely spectacular images there, Jonathan. I think my favourite was... Uh, the really subtle, the red cross with the man's face veiled yeah. behind it. It's just so subtle yeah, and just brilliant. Popped, popped out of nowhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. You've really got to look and then you see hidden depths and your imagination. You. Yeah. Incredible you. work, my friend. Thank you very much. So let me uh, let everyone know where we can find Jonathan and Jack and myself online so first is do check out the influx gallery of artists at influxgallery.com slash artists so influx gallery is an online gallery and also in the notting notting hill area of london correct jack right, yeah. west, west london great you can find uh, jonathan on the influx gallery site at influxgallery.com jonathan banks you can find jonathan on instagram Instagram.com slash Jonathan Banks Photography. You can follow Jack online at savagedart.com. <laughs> Love that. Love that title. It's great. And uh, Jack on Instagram too at Instagram.com, Jack Savage Photo. I'm also on the Influx Gallery, InfluxGallery.com, Andrew Kavanaugh. And on Instagram, Instagram.com, Digital Artist Drew. And uh, just a reminder for people who are either watching it on YouTube or will be watching the recording, please do consider subscribing to my Digital Art Drew channel on YouTube, Digital Art Photoshop and Photography Focus live streams, Photoshop tutorials, Adobe Express, quite the variety, Digital Art Drew. Subscribe, search for that, Digital Art Drew on YouTube. Thank you. And um, do remember to join the Digital Art Group on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups, the digital art group. Thank you so much, Jonathan. It was great. Thank you so much, Jack. Thanks, Jonathan. And thanks, uh, thanks for those who have watched it live and those who will be watching the recording. As usual, I will be posting the recording in all the different Facebook groups and all the social networks all across. So thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Thanks, guys.